everyone, it's Jennifer from Fiber Flux. Welcome back to part four of our Learn to Crochet series. This is the final project of the series where we are celebrating National Crochet Month by learning how to crochet some wonderful basic projects. So for part one, we made a fabulous scarf using this green yarn where we learned some basic stitches and how to do some fringe. For part two, we moved on to a cowl crocheted in the round using this aqua yarn here. For part three, we learned how to make a ribbed pom-pom hat with this gray yarn. So for week four, to kind of wrap up our series, we're combining all these lovely colors of the yarn we used to create a striped throw. Now we're going to be learning how to do a multitude of basic stitches. So this is a great project where you can really master all of the basic stitches. And I'm going to get in, into that in just a moment. And finally, we're going to learn how to switch colors and we're going to learn how to make some really easy little tassels that you can put on all four corners of the blanket to kind of finish it off. Now the stitch work that I was mentioning before, uh, once again, uh, uses a variety of stitches. So we're going to be incorporating single crochets, half double crochets, double crochets, treble crochets, and double treble crochets. So it really is a sampler of, of sorts where we're going to be repeating these stitches over and over. So you really get a mastery of the basic stitches. So this is kind of like a, a sampler of the basic crochet stitches. So you're really going to get a lot of practice with this project. If you're just joining us, I will put a link down below for the written pattern and also the link will point you to the other projects as well. These tutorials will be up forever. Even though we're kind of wrapping up the series today with the last project, you can always see these tutorials and you can really go at your own pace. The finished blanket measures about 75 inches wide and about 50 inches tall. So because it's wider than it is taller, I actually turn the blanket on its side and it it has vertical stripes. So when I use it, it's actually a triangle this way, but I crocheted it widthwise. You can kind of play around with the dimensions. There's really no special stitch count, but those are the dimensions that I achieved. And then each one of these tassels is about three inches tall. So let's get started. For this project, you'll need a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle, a ruler or tape measure is super helpful to get the length that you're after. You'll also need a 6.5 millimeter K crochet hook and your yarn. So if you've continued this series with us, this is the last project of our series. So all the projects we've made are using the Red Heart Dreamy yarn. Now we're going to be using uh, four balls of this to make our throw and the colors that I'm going to be using are one ball of the gray, one ball of the aqua, one ball of the celery, and one ball of the dark taupe. So each one of these has a yardage of 466 yards, and I'm going to be using four of those. Now, uh, I always get a lot of questions about substituting yarn. If you want to substitute yarn, I would recommend a great substitute is Red Heart with Love. That is a similar weight yarn that also recommends this K crochet hook, so you'll get similar results. Uh, the strand, so this yarn has like a fuzzy, uh, kind of fluffy texture. Um, the Red Heart with Love has like a smoother strand, so it just really depends on the look you're after. They'll give you different looks, which is fun. You can experiment a little bit. Um, but just look for a yarn that recommends the 6.5 millimeter K crochet hook, and you can find this in... Uh, on any yarn label, there'll be boxes on the back of the yarn label. So look for that 6.5 millimeter K crochet hook, and also look for a medium four on the yarn weight scale as well. So that's all you need, so let's get started. Okay, so to begin, I grabbed um, one of the colors, the dark taupe. You can start with any color you like, it's totally up to you. Uh, but we're going to start with the starting chain. We're going to kind of make a long chain and then work our way upward. The pattern is five rows, and each row is going to be a different stitch. So we're really going to master a lot of stitches with this project. Um, and then later on in the video, once we've gotten through that part, I'm going to show you how to change colors later on in the video. But we're going to stick with this color for now. Okay, so what we want to do is put a slip knot on our hook first. So I'm going to just zoom in a teeny tiny bit. There you go. And then 
So what we want to do is wrap the yarn around your fingers to make a loop, bring the yarn behind the loop, reach in with your hook, bring up that loop, and tighten, okay? So our starting chain of our throw is 150 chains, okay? So the other thing I wanted to explain is even though our starting chain is 150, it, there's no special stitch count. So if you make 150 chains and you're like, you know, I'd really like my blanket to be a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller, it can be really any number of chains you like. I wanted to emphasize that because uh, this blank is very versatile. There's no counting or anything like that. Um, the 150 chains is simply a guideline to get you started. So if you want to add or subtract chains, feel free to do that, okay? So to make a chain, wrap yarn around hook and bring it through the loop. That's one. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the loop. That's two. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the loop. That's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, tw whoops, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 149 and 150 okay so here is our starting chain it's nice and long for a blanket one question I get a lot from people who are learning how to crochet is the starting chain a lot of times when we're learning how to crochet the starting chain can be a little bit tight so if you're having a little bit of trouble with the tightness now you want your chains see how I, I can see a little light through each one of them that's kind of what you want so you can work into them. If they're so tight that you can't fit a hook into them, try going up a hook size. So we're using the 6.5 millimeter K crochet hook. The next size up would be the L, uh, usually the 8 millimeter L crochet hook. So try going up a hook size or even two if you're having a lot of trouble for the starting chain only. And then when we work on the rest of our blanket, you can go back to the K hook. So just a little side note on that. All right, let's move on to row one. Now, as promised, we're gonna be doing lots of different stitches for this blanket, but because it's a blanket, you're gonna do many, many of the same stitch before we switch over to the next stitch. So I think this is the perfect opportunity if you don't know some of these stitches to really master them with this project. All right, so row one, we're gonna be focusing on the single crochet stitch. So in the second chain from the hook, so this loop here on our hook does not count. So we're gonna count one, two. So right here, this chain here, we're gonna work our first single crochet. So let me zoom in so you can see that a little closer. So count one, two chains in, insert your hook into that chain, wrap yarn around hook, bring up a loop. You'll have two loops on your hook. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through both loops, just like that. Let's try it again into the next chain, insert your hook, wrap yarn around hook, bring up a loop, two chains are on your hook, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through both loops, okay? So we've just made two single crochet stitches. We're gonna pick up speed in a moment, but I'm gonna go slow for these first couple of stitches. Insert the hook into the next chain, bring up a loop, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through both loops. Next chain, insert the hook into the next chain, bring up a loop, Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through both loops. Insert the hook into the next chain, bring up a loop, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through both loops, okay? So once you get that momentum going, we're gonna pick up speed and work some single crochets all the way across in every single chain, okay? So work across your chains here, working your single crochet stitches. If you need to see this slower, simply back up the video. You can watch the slow crochet, uh, single crochets again if you need to. There's also on YouTube a slow motion setting. You can slow the video down. And although my voice may sound much different while we're doing this, uh, it will help if you need to see the whole thing nice and slow, okay? So I'm just gonna work my single crochet stitches all the way across. Now once we get to the end of our chain here, let's just stop for a minute and look at our work. 
So we got some nice stitches in here. Once we get towards the end of our chain, I'm going to show you how to finish off the row and we're going to move on to the next row, okay? Okay, I'm just working those last few single crochets of the row. You want to go all the way to that very last chain, okay? Okay, so row one is complete. And as you can see, we have a nice length of single crochet stitches. So for row two, we're going to be moving on to the half double crochet stitch is our next stitch we're going to focus on. So for the half double crochet stitch, we're going to chain two to get to the next row. So let me just get this tail out of the way here. We're going to chain two. So for the single crochet, we started with the single crochet, so we didn't do a turning chain. But for single crochet, you normally do a chain one, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Um, so chain two, one and two, and then we're going to turn our work. So take this long strip you've created and just flip it over. And then this chain two is going to count as our first half double crochet of the row. So see at the bottom of that, there's a loop. We're not going to work into that first loop. We're going to go to this next one, okay? So I'm going to once again go through the half double crochet nice and slow for you. So for this stitch, we're going to wrap the yarn around the hook, insert the hook into that stitch that we talked about just a second ago, wrap yarn around the hook, bring up a loop. This time you're going to have three loops on your hook. Wrap yarn around hook and bring it through all three loops. And that's the half double crochet stitch. Let's do a couple of these nice and slow and then we can get going on the rest of our row. Okay, once again, wrap yarn around hook, Insert the hook into the next stitch, wrap yarn around hook, bring up a loop. Three loops are on the hook, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through all three loops. Okay? Wrap yarn around hook, insert it into that next stitch, wrap yarn around hook, bring up a loop. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through all three loops. And as you can see, the half double crochet is just slightly taller. So as we work through these stitches, the next one will be double crochet, then treble, then double treble, they're going to increase in height, okay? So these first couple of rows, you're going to be thinking maybe, wow, this is not really growing very fast, but once we get to some of these taller stitches, your blanket's just going to pop up, okay? So let's do a couple more of these together, and then we'll move on for the rest of the row. Wrap yarn around hook, insert it into the next stitch, Wrap yarn around hook, bring up a loop. Three loops are on your hook. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through all three loops. Okay? I'm going to do a couple more of these for you. Whoops. Wrap yarn around hook, bring up a loop. Yarn around hook, all three loops. Okay? So we'll do a couple more of these. And once, whoops, I keep forgetting to wrap yarn around hook. Definitely don't forget that. Wrap yarn around hook, bring up a loop. So once again, with uh, YouTube, if you want to slow it down, you may absolutely do that uh, to see this nice and slow. But I'm going to pick up speed now that we've kind of learned how to do it. Okay, let me get a little bit more yarn. Okay, so we're just going to be working a half double crochet in every stitch all the way across our project here. And then I'm going to continue working my stitches. So let's meet at the end of this row. Almost to the end we'll meet and we'll finish up the row once again and then we'll, we're going to transition on to the double crochet row next, row three. Okay. So let's work across for row two, and then we'll meet towards the end of the row and transition to the next row. Just working those last couple of half double crochets of our row. Let me just grab a little bit more yarn to get us to the end of this row here. All right, so we're coming to an interesting part of our blanket here. Now before we were just working into the chain, so we didn't have to worry about this. But now that we've come to the end of the row here, there is a turning chain. Okay, so remember we uh, did a chain and turned our work. Um, before when we were working the single crochets into the chain, we didn't have to worry about that. But now when you come to the end of this turning chain, you're going to look for the topmost chain here. And there aren't really many to pick from because we've gone from a single crochet to a half double crochet. But you're going to work a 
half double crochet into the topmost chain of that turning chain, okay? So just insert the hook and then just work your half double crochet the way you normally would to finish off that row, okay? So here is our half double crochet row. Row two is complete. Now we're gonna move on to the double crochet. Okay, so if you joined me for our hat, our cowl, and our scarf, we've been focusing on the double crochet stitch for all of those projects. Um, now we, we did depart a little bit with the hat, but the double crochet, if you've done the other projects, would, would feel a little bit uh, easier because we've done so many uh, projects with those. So what we're gonna do for that one is, I'm still gonna go nice and slow for those of you who aren't familiar with the stitch, but we're gonna chain three this time because the double crochet stitch is a tiny bit taller than the half double crochet, so we need an extra turning chain on there. So we're gonna chain three, one, two, three, and again, turn our work, okay? So this one is gonna be a little bit taller, so you're gonna see a little bit of height happening in this one. So once again, this chain three is gonna count as one of our double crochets. So if you see this loop at the base of that column, we're not gonna work into that. We're gonna work into the next one because that double cr crochet counts as one of them, okay? So this chain here, that next chain that you come to, what we're gonna do is wrap yarn around hook to make a double crochet, insert the hook into that chain that we just talked about, Wrap yarn around hook, bring up a loop. Once again, you're gonna have three loops on your hook, but this one's a little different. So wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops only. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through those last two loops, okay? And you can see the double crochet is quite a bit taller than the stitch we just did. Okay, let's do a couple of these nice and slow, and then we'll cruise through the rest of this uh, row three. So we're just gonna work a double crochet in every stitch. Wrap yarn around hook, insert the hook into the next stitch, Wrap yarn around hook, bring up a loop. Three loops are on your hook. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops. Okay, I'm just gonna get some more yarn off this yarn ball here. Okay, next stitch, same thing. Wrap yarn around hook, insert the hook into the next stitch, bring up a loop, yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops, yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops, okay? So you can see, we we're almost creating as much height as we did for the first two uh, rows. All right, let's continue. I'm gonna pick up speed a little bit with our double crochets. We're just gonna be working those double crochets in every stitch all the way across, okay? Just like that. All right, I'm going to continue with my double crochets all the way across our row here, and then we're going to uh, rejoin, and I'm gonna show you how to transition from the double crochet row to the treble crochet row, okay? So we're gonna continue with row three, we'll rejoin towards the end of row three. Okay, so I'm just working that very last double crochet of the row. And then we're gonna also work a double crochet in the top of the turning chain from the previous row as well. So as you can see, our blanket is getting a little bit of height to it now. Okay, so let's move on to row four. Now row four, we're gonna make an even taller stitch, the treble crochet stitch. So that requires an even taller turning chain as well to get the height that you need. So we're going to chain four this time, one, two, three and four and turn our work. Let me just slide everything over. So once again, this chain four that we just did counts as one of our treble crochets of the row. So we're not gonna work into this, see the base of this, how there's a, a loop there? We're not gonna work into that. We're gonna go to this next one. All right, I'm gonna do the first couple of treble crochets nice and slow, and then we'll pick up speed a little bit as we go. So this is very similar to the double crochet stitch, but instead of wrapping yarn around hook once, we're gonna wrap yarn around hook twice. So wrap yarn around hook twice, insert the hook into that stitch, bring up a loop, you'll have four loops on your hook. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the next two loops. 
Wrap yarn around the hook, bring it through the last two loops. And as you can see, this stitch is almost as tall as all the work that we've done so far. So with rows four that we're doing now and row five, we're going to make an even taller stitch. You're going to get quite a bit of height in a short amount of time with those two rows. Okay, so let's do this one more time, nice and slow. Wrap yarn around hook two times, one, two, insert the hook into the next stitch, wrap yarn around hook, bring up a loop, you'll have four loops on your hook, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the next two loops, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops. Okay, we're getting lots of height now. All right, let's do this one more time nice and slow and then we'll pick up speed. Wrap yarn around hook two times, insert the hook into the next stitch, bring up a loop, yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops, yarn around hook, bring it through the next two loops, yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops, okay? And it looks very cute. Nice, uh, it's getting a little bit of openness to it. So these uh, single crochet, half double crochet are very dense. This is kind of like a medium density stitch, I would call it. And then we're starting to get some tall, kind of ladder-like stitches. All right, let's pick up speed a little bit. We're going to work a treble crochet into the next stitch, treble crochet into the next stitch. And we're going to do this all the way across our row for row four. And like I said, you're going to get uh, some nice height in a relatively short period of time with this stitch and even more height with the next stitch, okay? So just continue working your treble crochets all the way across. And like all the other stitches so far, I also have a separate video for the treble crochet stitch. And you can watch that. And if you feel more comfortable, you can create a little swatch of this to practice if you like also, okay? So I'm gonna just continue working my treble crochets and then we'll rejoin towards the end of this row and we'll move on to row five, our final row of our stitch sequence. Okay, just working that last treble crochet of the row. And then the same thing we've been doing before, we're gonna work our last treble crochet into the top of that turning chain. So locate the topmost chain of your turning chain and work your treble crochet in there. So as you can see, we've gotten a little bit taller here with our throw. Now, let's move on to our final row of our stitch repeat. And then what you'll do is you'll just repeat it again. So we did rows one, two, three, four. We're gonna begin row five, and then we'll, we'll just repeat that for the rest of the blanket. Okay, so the last stitch we're gonna learn is the tallest stitch of our sequence here. So, so far we've done single, half double, double, treble. Now we're going to do a double treble crochet. And I wanted to just say, as a side note, if you're not into any of the stitches that we're learning how to do, you can simply leave them out. If you don't like half double crochets, for example, just skip that row and make your blanket without it. It's totally fine. This is a very tall stitch, and I am excited to incorporate this into this blanket because it's going to give us a lot more height as well. So it's a it's nice for a blanket because you get a nice uh, jump in your length, or your height rather. Okay, so this is the tallest stitch of our group, so we're going to need to do five chains for our turning chain. So one, two, three, four, and five. See how tall that is? And then we're going to turn our work. Okay, so if you remember, when we did the treble crochet, we did two wraps around the hook. We did yarn over twice. For this one, we're gonna yarn over three times, okay? So once again, this chain five that we did counts as the first double treble. So at the base here where that loop is, don't put anything into that one, go to the next stitch. See the next column that you come to? The little loop at the top of that is our stitch, okay? So let's learn how to do the double treble crochet. Now this one, even though this is our Learn to Crochet series, this one is a little bit more advanced than the other ones. The other ones are more basic stitches that you see more often in patterns. But I thought because this may be your first blanket, this is very similar to the other stitches. We're just doing more wraps um, and there'll be more loops on our hook. But um, I wanted to put this stitch in there to give you some height on your blanket so you can really get a nice momentum with your blanket. Okay, now if you don't feel comfortable making this stitch or you're just not into it, you don't have to do it. Just do rows one through four for your repeat. So what we're gonna do, like I said before, is wrap the yarn three times around the hook. 
one, two, three. Insert the hook into that stitch that we talked about earlier. Wrap yarn around the hook, bring up the loop. You're going to have one, two, three, four, five loops on your hook. So wrap yarn around the hook, bring it through the first two loops. Wrap yarn around the hook, bring it through the next two loops. Wrap yarn around the hook, bring it through the next two loops. Wrap yarn around the hook, bring it through the last two loops. Look how tall that stitch is. It's super duper tall. Okay, so let's do a couple of these nice and slow, and then like we've been doing for the rest of our blanket, we'll pick up speed and then cruise through the rest of the row. Wrap yarn around hook three times. One, two, three. Insert the hook into the next stitch. Bring up a loop. Five loops on the hook. Yarn around hook. Bring it through the first two loops. Yarn around hook. Bring it through the next two loops. Yarn around hook. Bring it through the next two loops. Yarn around hook. Bring it through the last two loops. Okay? Let's do that one more time nice and slow. Then we'll pick up some speed. Wrap yarn around hook three times. Insert the hook into the next stitch, bring up a loop, bring it through the first two loops, next two loops, next two loops, last two loops, okay? Look at that height that we're getting. Very nice, okay. One, two, three. One, two, three, and four. Up here on around hook three times, bring up a loop, Okay, all right, let me just do one more for you. Then we're gonna continue across our row. Whoops, I pulled too many loops with that one. Okay. All right, so continue with your double treble crochet all the way across the row. And then we're going to rejoin because I'm gonna show you how to uh, I, I mentioned earlier about a pattern repeat. That simply is working rows one through five once again. And we're just gonna be keep doing that over and over and over. One through five, one through five, one through five, over and over for the rest of our blanket, okay? So continue working your double treble crochets. I know this was a lot of loops, so if you need to back up the video or put it in the slow motion mode, feel free to do that as well. Okay, I'm just working that very last double treble crochet of the row. Just going through all those loops and then same thing we've been doing for the whole first part of our blanket we're going to work another double treble crochet into the top of that turning chain so just go right into there and work right into that topmost chain of your turning chain okay so this is our blanket repeat rows one through five and you can see uh, we're increasing those height of those stitches and we got a nice band here going. So for the rest of your blanket, um, I mentioned this earlier, you're going to just repeat rows one through five. One through five, one through five, one through five for the rest of your blanket. Now you can change colors as often as you like. You can work a little bit more of your first color before switching. You can do uh, big chunky stripes. You could do thinner stripes. You could change colors every single row if you like. Um, I'm going to work a little bit more height on mine, but um, we will rejoin in just a bit and I'm going to show you how to switch colors. I'm going to do some more pattern repeats before I switch colors, so I'm going to get a little bit more height on my blanket and then I'll show you how I do that as well. Just a really simple way. There's lots of different ways to do it. And as you learn more about crochet, you may want to uh, learn some different ways of switching yarn, uh, yarn colors, or if you need to add on a new yarn ball. So let me just get you started on the next repeat. So you're gonna chain one, and then you're gonna turn, and then this chain one, remember um, our row one is single crochets. So this chain one counts as a single crochet, so that first loop you see, don't work anything into that, but instead go to the next one, and then work a single crochet into that stitch, and in every stitch all the way across. Just as a little refresher, insert the hook, bring up a loop, yarn around hook, bring it through both loops. And you're just going to do this all the way across. So just keep repeating rows one through five over and over and over until your blanket is as tall as you'd like it to be. So stay tuned, I'm going to show you in our next part of how to change colors when you're ready to switch colors, okay? 
So just keep repeating those rows. We're going to learn how to switch colors next. So once you're ready to switch colors, or as it often happens in blanket making, you know, join a new ball of yarn, because you use lots of balls of yarn when you make a blanket, go ahead and take your scissors and cut the yarn. Then you'll want to fasten off your current color or current yarn that you're using by wrapping the yarn around the hook and just pulling it all the way through. Okay, so you'll have this tail and we'll deal with that tail later. Let's grab our new color. I'm going to move on to the celery color next. Now I wanted to say as a side note that this is one way to join a new yarn. There are tons of other ways. If you have a preferred method, if you have crocheted before, please feel free to use that method. Do whatever you like. It's your project, whatever you feel comfortable doing. I like to simply just cut the yarn and tie the new color right on. So we have our new color and we're going to grab our hook. I like to use my hook and see where we tied this knot up here. There is a little stitch right there, that very last stitch of the row. So you can see the little opening there. Put your hook into that opening and then grab your new yarn and leave a little bit of a tail and kind of hook it onto your hook and pull it through. And then all you're going to do is just tie it right on. Again, there's other ways, but this is my favorite way to do it. And it's super easy. So these two tails, we will weave them, them in later on in this video. But what you're going to do is reinsert your hook. So go back into that same stitch, because that's the first stitch of the new row when we begin. Bring up a loop. And I happen to be on my pattern repeat. So I'm going to be repeating my pattern starting with row one. So for row one, I would chain. Wherever you leave off, though, is what you'll need to do for your starting chain. So all I need to do is chain one. And then I'm just going to turn, get my tails out of the way, and then just start working into those stitches. And I'm ready to go again for a new row. So just keep continuing with rows one through five, changing colors as needed. You can do kind of a random striping. You could do something more organized with the same uh, number of rows per color. You can really take it anywhere you like. So I'm going to continue working on my blanket and then we will rejoin towards the end of the blanket and I'm going to show you how to finish off your blanket. We're going to weave in those ends and we're going to create some tassels for the four corners of our blanket as well. So I'm going to show you how to make a really easy tassel using no fancy tools at all. So keep working on your blanket and we'll rejoin in just a bit. I'm just working that last double treble crochet stitch here. So three wraps of the hook. And those last couple loops. And then we still have our turning chain. So at the very top most chain of the turning chain, once again, we're going to work our last double treble crochet of our row and of our entire blanket. So when you're finished, you can grab your scissors and cut the yarn. I have just a little bit of yarn left here um, because I've already made my tassel, but we're going to get to that point next. So just cut the yarn, wrap the yarn around the hook, pull it all the way through. And then what you'll need to do next is get your tapestry needle. And I went ahead and wove in some of the ends already, but what you'll want to do is thread your tapestry needle. And let me just zoom in a little so you can see what I'm doing here. Go ahead and thread your tapestry needle. With this fuzzy yarn, you might need to give it a little bit of a twist before you thread. And then just go into those loops of your blanket here. And you'll want to keep now, I have quite a bit of a ways down until I get to the next color, but you want to keep the, for example, the aqua. I'm only going to we be weaving this into the aqua section of the blanket. So I like to go in one direction and then bring it back in the other direction just to get that end locked into place. You might need to do a little wiggle work to kind of get it in there and then straighten out the piece before you trim. Just make sure everything's nice and neat. And then take your scissors and just snip that tail. And then you'll just repeat that for the rest of your ends all the way 
across. So let's talk about the colors a little bit now. I sort of did, as I worked my repeats, my single crochet, half double crochet, double crochet, treble crochet, double treble crochet repeats, uh, I did kind of a random striping sequence. So sometimes, as you can see here with the gray, I did one repeat in a color. Sometimes I did two repeats, which gave me a little bit of a chunkier stripe. So I was able to, as I worked my blanket, do a single repeat of green, and then later on I did a double repeat of green, and I kind of did that for all the colors. So as you can see here is a double repeat of aqua, a single repeat of aqua, but because I kind of wanted to mix up the width of the stripes a little bit, so it gave me some visual interest. The last part of our tutorial, after you've crocheted the blanket, after you've woven all the ends in, and I have to say this is a really soft, squishy blanket. It's a really nice, cozy, kind of lightweight comfy blanket. So it's uh, one you could take into other seasons besides winter. It's a great early spring blanket. Um, but we're going to add some tassels to the bottoms um, of each corner of our blanket. So what you want to do, if you did a stripe like I did, I did, for example, aqua. I didn't want to do an aqua tassel on the end of an aqua corner. So I did an aqua on the end of this brown and I did down here, I have a green one on the, this end, and then over here I have a, the dark taupe on the end of the other aqua corner. So that leaves us one corner left, and the only color, let me just turn the blanket, it's gotten pretty large. When you make tassels, there are some fancy tools out there that you can use, but I simply like to use my hands a pair of scissors, and a tapestry needle. So you really only need some minimal tools to make these. So what you want to do is choose the color you want to make for your tassel. Now the only one I haven't done, like I said before, is the gray. So I'm going to be putting a gray tassel here. And what you'll want to do to begin is to cut two pieces of yarn about 12 inches long each. Okay, so cut two pieces of yarn and set them aside. And then what we're going to do is we're going to wrap the yarn around our hands. So let me just grab a little bit of yarn here. And what you're going to do is take the strand of yarn and let it kind of go down the front of your hand. So just kind of lay it across the front of your hand like this. And then what we're going to do is wrap it 40 times and that will give you a nice fluffy looking tassel. Now you can wrap more for a very chunky tassel or if you kind of want like a longer kind of thinner delicate tassel, you could wrap it less times to just kind of experiment in your hand and, and see what you're liking. Okay, so I'm going to, whoops, one of my strands is running off. I'm going to take the yarn and run it down the front of my hand and then go ahead and start wrapping. So one, two, three, four, five, six, 38, 39, and 40. So if you need a shorter tassel, you can wrap it around less fingers, but we're doing all four fingers to get this, this nice height that we have here. So once you wrapped it around about 40 times, go ahead and cut the yarn, and then you'll have a little bundle. So carefully slip the bundle off of your hands, and then you're going to grab the, one of the strands of yarn that you cut earlier, and just kind of run it through the center of the bundle very carefully, so you don't pull the bundle apart. We want to keep it intact as much as possible. And then you're just going to tie the yarn at the top of your bundle, nice and tight. You don't want to do it overly tight because it could snap the yarn off and you gotta got to start over there. Okay, so then we have this little bundle here that we've tied. And then what we're going to do is take the other strand and just lay it flat. I just want to lay it flat across the table and sort of like comb it down, get it nice and neat. And you're gonna lay it so that it's about a third of the way down. You can see here, the way I've laid it down. It almost looks like these tassels always remind me of little dolls or something like that. So what we wanna do is just tie the yarn just like that and tie it once, tie it twice, just get a nice, tight knot on there. And then we have almost a tassel. So what we want to do is where you tied it, that one piece lays down nice and flat, but the other one where you tied it tends to want to stick up. 
So you want to take your tapestry needle and thread that piece. And tassels are really easy because to weave them in, you just got to kind of go under this band here, let it come down the other side and pull it all the way through. And there you go. So once you've done that and gotten your little pieces all nice and neat, you can flip your tassel over and then you're going to get your scissors. Now I sometimes use little tiny embroidery scissors for just snipping one or two pieces of yarn, but you'll want a nice, sharp, larger pair of scissors for this. So we're going to kind of go in here and cut all the loops. So anywhere you see a loop in your tassel, you're just going to give it a snip. And you can kind of dig around and see if there's any left. Then what I like to do is kind of comb things down with my fingers. And you can see that some of the strands are much longer. So take it in your hand and sort of flip it up and hold it nice and tight to straighten everything out. And then you're going to take your scissors and you're just going to give it a straight across haircut. Okay, just to get it nice and straight along the bottom. Now you may get some yarn crumbs and that's totally normal. So grab the corner that you'll be attaching it to and you're just going to thread the tapestry needle with one of the strands. Just pull it through and then go into the corner and in the, one of those stitches, make sure you go into more than one loop because as it pulls, it'll pull the loop out. So just thread it on there and then grab the other end and then you're just going to tie it right on. So tie it and tie it and tie it at least three times there. And then, like I showed you before, it's really super easy to weave in the ends of a tassel. So you just want to thread your tapestry needle once again. And then you're just going to go through the top, through the middle, make sure you go under that band there and come out the bottom and pull it through. Now take your other strand that you tied it onto with and thread that one and then do the same thing. Go from the top, go all the way through, make sure you go under that band, that's the important part, and come out the bottom and just give it a little tug. And then once again grab your scissors and just trim those two remaining strands. Okay? No fancy tools, and we just made a lovely little tassel for the bottom of our blanket. So our beautiful beginner blanket is complete. We've stitched the whole thing up together using a variety of basic stitches to master each and every one. We've learned how to switch colors, we've done some finish work, and we've also added some lovely tassels to each corner of our blanket as well to finish it off. I also wanted to tell you, if you're not part of the Ravelry Crochet Along group, I strongly recommend that group. If you're making things along with us, that is where uh, it's kind of a, a maker hub for all these crochet alongs that we do. We have some year-long crochet alongs. This one was for National Crochet Month. And we also have some seasonal ones. The next one will be our spring crochet along. We're making something really beautiful and springy. And this is the last part of our series of the Learn to Crochet series. And I hope you enjoyed this series. So we made a scarf, a cowl, a hat, and a blanket. So four very useful, wearable, lovely things that you can put around your home, you can wear, and kind of show off your new crochet skills. So thank you so much for joining me on this series, and thanks so much for watching this video. Also, be sure and click the subscribe button to get all the latest FiberFlux video updates. Thanks again.